All right, everyone, welcome. We've got some time today to talk about campus visits. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Annie introduce herself first. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. My name is Annie Pocklington, and I am here with the Washington Student Achievement Council, um, but more importantly, Washington State Gear Up. I am our program associate for student support services. And today I'm also gonna be um, the room moderator as well as the chat monitor. So I'm happy to be here presenting with Lindsay, but also here for your technical support needs. So feel free to drop anything in the chat. You can send it to everyone or send it uh, to me personally and I'll try to be checking that as regularly as I can. Great, um, my name is Lindsay Howe. I work for Focus Training. And uh, I've had the privilege of presenting with Annie now. This is year two. I'm a little bit sad that we're, well, lots of sad that we are not in Montana. I was telling Annie earlier that uh, I have two states left on my list to check off. One is Hawaii and the other is Montana. So I was really looking forward to going to Big Sky. And, uh, but yes, we're here today to talk about how we made the pivot to campus visits going virtual. I'll share from my perspective, we plan a lot of events with usually in person on, uh, on college campuses and in various places and um, usually collaboratively work with Annie on lots of different types of programming to support college access and getting students on campus. So this year, as it became pretty obvious, Annie and I actually started having discussions um, probably back in May when we were talking about what does the future of fall look like? And that's where it became, became pretty obvious that for us, a lot of college students, if, if colleges were going to welcome college students back, that was one thing, but to also be able to bring our students onto college campuses started to look like less and less of a possibility. And so today, Annie and I are going to share just how our process has been about campus visits going virtual. I also put a link to our presentation in the chat that has lots of links to resources for you. Uh, both my style and Annie's style is to share the things that we know and also provide resources to you in the best way that we can. We're also here for lots of questions. So um, this is a pretty accurate picture of what, um, if, you, if you're a big fan of Twitter, like I am, there's lots of memes out there. So right now there's one of where it started, how it's going. Um, I, I, for one, was really pumped for 2020. I had a baby in 2019. I moved cross country. I was like really ready to put my facilitator wings back on. And that um, came to a bit of a, a, a halt, a crashing halt. And so we decided to make the pivot to virtual programming. So um, here, uh, I also put in the chat too. So if you wanna uh, connect with others in the room, you know, one of the things that I've done a lot of in 2020 is thinking about just self-reflection. And I remember uh, the first time I stepped onto a college campus, I was in the third grade and it was a small liberal arts school in Nebraska and I don't, I, I guarantee at that age, I did not fully understand what college was or what the possibility of it was. But I remember sitting in this massive lecture hall and thinking like, wow, this is the future of what classroom is like. And for me, I was the first in my family to go to college. And that, that just is like imprinted into my brain. Um, so for me, I went to, after high school, I went to the University of Nebraska and there, there are like so many little pieces on campus that I really love. And I think that if I went back to the university, there's a great place where there's these beautiful columns that exist and the college graduates walk through them. And it's kind of a faux pas if you walk through it before you're a graduate and, but you can go see them. And it's just like a, a symbolic experience at the university when you walk through that. And to me, I'm like, that's, that feels like something I, I gave to myself, a gift I gave to myself. Annie, you want to share about you? Yeah, absolutely. So similar to Lindsay, we started this year really excited for all of the content we'd be providing to students starting really in June with our summer programming um, through, you know, into 2020 and 2021. 
Um, and obviously a, a switch flipped pretty quickly. So we are super excited about the relationship that we've continued to sustain with Focus because um, so for our summer programming, we were really quickly able to transition from what would have been a 300 plus student in-person camp to an awesome two weeks of virtual engagement, um, kind of in a similar setting, but you know, not the on-campus thing we were imagining necessarily, but definitely something that allowed students to start to dip their toes into um, imagining themselves on campus and really getting ready for the rest of their high school career and preparing themselves for post-secondary pathways. So after quickly after camp reimagined it, itself and became something new, Lindsay and I really started to talk about um, just the burdens on uh, high school counselors, our staff in the high school, how we could help uh, alleviate some of that. And um, we started to kind of tease out the idea of these virtual campus tours. So I'm definitely excited to talk today about um, how those are going. I know for us, it really just started as like, hey, there's this need um, specifically in supporting our students, but really in helping out our high school counselors as well. And it's been a lot of fun. I think we've learned a lot, but ultimately I'm super stoked about um, the first visit even was um, just more than I really could have imagined. So really excited to talk a bit more about how it is going. I went to college at WSU and then went and got my master's at the Evergreen State College. I am currently getting, um, I'm a doctoral candidate at the University of Washington Tacoma. And all of those campuses are really unique and different. So at WSU, it's the football stadium for me. At Evergreen, it'd be the organics garden. And I have not spent a ton of time on the University of Washington Tacoma's campus due to this virtual world. So kind of experiencing that alongside our students this year. Happy to be here with y'all. And both from my perspective and Annie's perspective, what we're doing a lot, um, I specifically work with about um, in, a, in a given year and in a normal year, I work with about 45 different grants or grant served institutions on various things. And as we've pivoted into virtual campus visits, we've kind of taken over as like the logistics host moderator for all things campus visits for um, some specific grants in some specific sites. All right. So making the pivot. So these are some of the areas that we have really explored and developed as we have gone into this virtual space. So we've looked at, um, since we know that students are in various areas, so they might be at home, they might be at school, they're just in transition all the time. So. Um, some of the areas that we looked at was synchronous. So doing live events like this, where we're doing more like info sessions and Q&A sessions on campus. Um, sometimes we've had the opportunity with admissions to have them film various things around campus. That's been kind of neat or to give a walking tour of it. One thing that we have found is that universities themselves were also in a situation where they recognized they were not going to be hosting masses of students on their campus to do, you know, like we uh, used to have like big red Fridays. That was our, our thing at Nebraska. And so now they're having to also look at ways to reach students. Some of them have some really great pre-recorded videos that we're incorporating into a lot of the curriculum and components of videos as well too. So combining some of those pieces to really showcase campus from a live component. Uh, we have also transitioned into more of an asynchronous. So a course style offering where we do recordings of live sessions, especially since we know that not all students are going to be available at certain time, like on a Thursday at two o'clock. Um, we'll take those live sessions from the synchronous components and add them into things like Google Classroom or Canvas with modules that have information that you can apply back into just this exposure and college readiness into campus. Yeah, I think the wonderful thing about Focus is that they have all of these incredible resources to really set up a classroom style learning environment for students. 
Um, at Gear Up, we don't necessarily have um, maybe the wide variety of resources that they do, but we have been able to utilize both live and recorded um, opportunities for students. Um, of course, whenever we make a student support, our goal is to first and foremost center our Gear Up students and then make it as widely available as possible, which is um, why the recorded versions have been really great. Yeah, and we know that some of you are also experiencing and doing your own campus visits. And so here, you know, I think like a great part of Gear West and something that I we all miss is just the spirit of collaboration. So if you're hosting campus visits, sharing like what campuses do you recommend? One thing that we have found that has been really interesting is that since you're going virtual, you have the opportunity to sometimes put students in an info session that they maybe never would have. I like to share this one. I had a group from Texas who asked us to put together an in-person bus tour uh, out on the East Coast. So they were taking students from the San Antonio area and they wanted to put them out in various places in the East Coast. And there were a couple of schools, you may have experienced this when you're planning an in-person campus tour, that those campuses were not always the most uh, welcoming to groups of students or maybe not willing to um, welcome 40 students, even though you're hand delivering 40 students on their campus. We found as we have transitioned into this virtual space is that we can meet with some of those colleges that maybe weren't necessarily accessible to students. So if you found a campus that you thought was really great, please put it in the chat. Um, and also too, we recognize that there is a virtual fatigue out there, that that fatigue is real, that um, I've already received a couple of uh, chats from some people about just getting students to work or participate in these experiences. Are there additional challenges? I know that internet, uh, I, I actually live in Vermont. I live just outside of Burlington, Vermont. And there's a lot of students here who don't have access to reliable internet. So sometimes doing these virtual programs can be a little more challenging, especially if we're doing live sessions. Um, at one point at my house, there were three humans doing Zoom and one of which was a four-year-old uh, and a mom that could not do Zoom and uh, Zoom for her and Zoom for me did not necessarily happen. So um, if you have challenges you're encountering too, uh, throw those in the chat. We're gonna roll through here. So here's some of the things where we recommend when you're structuring a visit. So here's our pro tips. So one thing for me, uh, I'm a, a huge planner, lists for lists, but I found that creating a strategic plan first is really important. So taking a look at where you wanna schedule those schools, how that works within your, uh, your in general lesson planning or your school calendar, and just looking at that too and creating just a framework for how you're going to deliver your campus visits. Things like scheduling, timing. Um, we've gotten feedback, we work with various grants and you know, our standard tour, you'll, you'll see our agenda, but our standard tour is about 90 minutes. And we've received feedback from people that are like, nope, please shorten it, please shorten it. Or people that are saying, you know, yeah, 90 minutes works for us. So working on that timing piece. And then the communication and recruitment piece. Uh, this communication piece is one that I connect with partners on pretty in depth, mostly because you all are the link to students. Like we're providing a resource and you all are the link to the students. And then from our perspective, we're out creating recruitment materials for you to push out to students to say like, join this activity, here's, here's what you're going to learn. So that strategic plan first is really important. We also look in here for content. So if you're going to be delivering content or you're gonna be looking at a school for a specific ask, this is where that plan comes in first. This one I think is really critical um, because it's about people support what they help to create. And I think that we need that more than ever in a virtual environment, especially in ways to reach students. So, um, involving your students on what they wanna see in these campus visits and asking them what they need from these campus visits or if they need additional resources after a campus visit is available. Now, in the beginning, when we started structuring these visits, it became really clear to us that anyone can send out a YouTube link, uh, that so many schools have 
just all of these great virtual resources. And if you send out the YouTube link to students, then what comes next? So involving them in the process and making sure they're getting the information they need. Um, this one too, connect with admissions early and be specific in your ask. Just like a standard campus visit, uh, sometimes they can be, for lack of better words, underwhelming that you can get an info session with admissions because they have a very standard session that they offer. But when you're asking for specific things, so if you know you want a student that's a part of that experience and you want to either showcase a specific program or a specific building or things like that, I think that that has been really helpful as we've worked with admissions because then they can tailor those visits for you. There. Um, the other part of it, try engagement techniques. Techniques. Uh, we use a lot of polling to get students involved. We use the chat feature. And um, our favorite at Focus, we use the Kahoot. We use Kahoot a lot and in incorporating that into Zoom. I did link this. Um, anything that's linked in this presentation, also at the end, there's a full page of linked resources that are available for you. But you can integrate Kahoot into Zoom as well. Um, here, this is about our standard visit agenda. They change often though, uh, based on what resources a school has. So um, this is about a 90 minute experience here. It can deviate when that Q&A session with students, especially we found that the student piece is really powerful that um, in asking questions to students on campus, the reality is some of our seniors may not step foot on a college campus until they're actually going to school if they haven't done a visit prior to their senior year. And so hearing from their peers about what is, what is life like in COVID-19 going to class and, and even asking admissions. I felt like admissions through the live sessions that we've done, they've been really forthcoming about how to help students find their fit on campus or what they need to go out and look for while they're in this virtual space. Um, we also like to show photos of campus if we can't get, um, we can't get necessarily access to campus to show them kind of key features on campus here. Uh, Annie, you wanna talk about your agenda? Yeah, absolutely. So when we were structuring our gear up virtual campus visits, we really had two main priorities. One was a 30 minute timeline because we knew um, based off feedback we had gotten from our high school staff that students were really um, just kind of making ends meet in terms of being involved in schoolwork and the virtual world generally. So we really wanted to keep it short. Um, and then we also wanted to make sure that we were meeting our gear up grade specific um, campus visit benchmarks. So um, we start with a quick intro, it's three to five minutes, and that's just me giving a general overview of the school. One thing we do know about campus visits is that um, colleges have different resources and wow factors. And although that's awesome, um, we want to make sure that students are making decisions about attending college based on their needs and information about the school not about how flashy an institution can make a video um, or, or things like that. So we really wanted to provide some consistency with every, every school right off the bat. How, how big is the school? Where is it located? And what type of school is it? Is it a community college, a four-year, et cetera, et cetera? And then um, we also encourage students to utilize notes and reflection questions in the beginning. Though nothing is mandatory, we are mainly just so stoked that students are online and engaging with us. We then pass it off to our admissions counselor who does about 20 minutes of meeting those campus visit benchmarks. So they provide a virtual tour video. We ask them to make that only five minutes of the visit and then dive further into overviews of majors and careers. Um, again, those we have a 10th grade cohort, so mainly focusing on the 10th grade benchmarks but overviewing the application process for any juniors or seniors who are online from our priority schools. And then kind of in this new world of virtual campus visit, another thing we really ask our admissions counselors to do is to highlight how to navigate their website because students are now um, at home trying to find their way through the campus. And um, we just wanna make sure that is accessible and something they become familiar with while they're on the call. And then we do some closing questions at the end. Um, again, 
This is a place with 10th graders. A lot of them are wondering about, you know, we might get 15 questions about, hey, do you have vet med? Do you have engineering? Do you have all these different things? We could one by one answer those, but we also really encourage students to do some research on their own. So we drop a link in the chat or ask the admissions counselor to navigate the website to where a student might be able to find that information. So being there as a moderator and a host, but also making sure that students are really um, finding their voice in their own research and reflection of these institutions. Annie hit on something really important, that virtual tour video. Um, I recommend if you're planning your college visits, go out one and preview it because there's, there's some interesting things that are out there, uh, especially some of the student created non-sponsored ones, um, but also keeping that window really short, like a 17 minute video is less impactful than a four to five minute one that um, we kind of push for that shorter or um, there are some campuses like um, Louisiana State University, LSU, they actually do micro videos and they do 60 second ones where students can go through and say like, I wanna look at this area of study and this area of study. And to me, that's really, really helpful. Um, and Annie was talking about the, how to navigate college websites. And this is an activity that I actually like to do when we're at camp with students. I like to have students pull up three different college websites through various tabs. And from the website, I like to have them tell me what are the key differences between these schools? Because there's various, they're not stock photos, they're actual photos of that campus, but it can be really challenging and kind of deceiving to know what you're looking for on that particular school's website. So um, this is, also linked in here. There's a college search worksheet. This is a great way to help students after a campus visit is over, give them a college search worksheet, have them go out onto the school's actual um, website and look through some of the key things that they're going to need if they're gonna to plan to attend that school. It also just kind of helps them navigate through it because uh, school websites, in my opinion, are, are somewhat oversaturated. They've got information and loads of information and so, if you can push students to the right information and give them a roadmap to it, I think that that's a great way to help them apply what they listen to. Um, I also put in here too, there's a link here for a curriculum sample. That curriculum sample is one of ours. So every student that attends one of our campus visits gets a curriculum sample that gives an overview of the school, demographic information, financial aid information, allows them to take notes, and then also has a checklist, a grade by grade checklist of what students should be doing there. Um, that sample is free for you to figure out how to incorporate it into your visit if you'd like. And I just wanted to overview our um, Gear Up Virtual Visit Series webpage um, on this free resources slide. Not only do we have our campus visit recordings there. They are Washington State specific schools and we're about midway through our series at this point. So there will be more to come, but you can also find a reflection question or series of reflection questions there, as well as an overview of um, what our virtual visit series is for and what campuses will be visiting in the future. So just a quick little plug. Uh, hosting a Q and A. So, um, this right here, I'm sure a lot of you have become Zoom experts. And um, we, so I, I created a sample questions resource that you can utilize for your Q&A sessions that are pretty common questions that get asked throughout it. Um, we kind of do, depending on the size of the audience and based on various restrictions, we'll collect questions via the Zoom chat feature or collect them in advance. So if we've got a short time frame, sometimes we collect them in advance as students register for them. Um, the moderator piece though is, I think is a key piece, especially when you're kind of facilitating dialogue between students and a speaker and just becoming familiar with that role of moderator um, or if you're facilitating some of the content as well and teaching the content, some, sometimes that can be kind of challenging. 
Um, before the presentation, our team connects with admissions and we'll actually do a really quick 30 minute dry run through, uh, mostly because we'll have them go through and check our presentation and talk through the content that's within our presentation to make sure that there isn't any overlap on that. Um, and then also in some ways too, like they'll point us in the right direction if we've got information that's missing or challenging. And then we'll go through some of the tech components of that Q&A piece. Students hosting student panels, we have found, uh, we'll, we'll reach out to either student admissions or the trio groups on campus have been really great about putting students on our events. And for the most part, they're really savvy about sitting in on a panel. Um, the panel piece has been really fun for us to be able to do with students. Yeah, I would say one thing I've noticed in our switch to the virtual world as well is I assume that students are utilizing Zoom or are familiar with the platform and really there's a lot of learning happening in this virtual visit, not just about the campus, but for many they're using other platforms. So just being patient with um, the chat and students understandings of, you know, muting, keeping your video off, things like that. So um, the admissions counselors we've worked with so far have been wonderful in Kind of recognizing that need and um, yeah it's just it's super fun to see what 10th graders wonder about college. Um, we had a student the other week ask if someone if he brought a dog to campus if there would be someone available to watch him while he was in class. So it's fun to watch the admissions counselors field those questions as well and um, yeah uh, I know one thing for us with connecting uh, with admissions counselors prior to the session has also been, you know, if, if the week before a visit maybe went off track a little bit or something didn't feel right about the content, we kind of just brief them on where students are at and what um, maybe has been reoccurring um, just so they can kind of figure out how to navigate that and provide their best visit as well. And we're also seeing some smaller colleges. So like um, we've been doing campus visits with community colleges and junior colleges and technical schools too. And sometimes those are the schools that don't always have the resources to put together a flashy video or to be able to have resources to like actually show campus. And so we've worked with them to help identify what are some other ways that we can give students exposure to that campus. And that's been really beneficial for students too, because showing them just a different range of colleges and working with admissions. If admissions isn't willing to schedule a virtual visit with you, we often uh, start making the ask in other departments. So I did one with the diversity and inclusion office at the University of Georgia a couple of weeks ago, and it was an incredible presentation. And so we just started making the ask. Uh, I'm a big believer in if you don't ask, you don't get. And usually admissions, um, this is kind of our standard when we're doing actual tours on campuses too, that if admissions says they're booked or they can't accommodate us, we'll start to find other various organizations on campus that our students could be interested in that have the ability to give an overview of campus. Um, so here, I'm in, and I'm going to show some screenshots. So um, something that we have done for our partners who aren't necessarily looking for a synchronous live session or just know that it's a challenge to get students there is we've been building out course-like experiences through um, a learning management system like Google Classroom or Canvas. Canvas is um, our personal preferred one where we've really just taken the content that we would deliver in a lot of these sessions or content that's available to us through college campuses and building out modules for that. So we've been able to do um, what we call campus capsules. So I'll show you a campus capsule on the next slide there, but essentially it's a school kind of taken down to very uh, kind of just very all these different pieces about that school and allowing students to submit discussion questions, to watch videos and tie it back so they can apply it. And then um, what's kind of nice about the LMS systems is that you can track everything that they submit. You can see the participation in it and you can make it part of your 
uh, your curriculum as well too. We also try to throw in there just in general college visits 101. So when you're looking at colleges, what do you need to look for? Financial aid is the other big one too of helping students just un take a deeper dive into that financial aid. Um, within each school, we also start to look at what is, what is um, the financial aid piece at that specific school as well. Here, this is just a couple of screenshots of how we've built out. So you'll see on the left here, we've got, um, this is Notre Dame. And these are all just the various elements that we created for a, a class type experience. So um, it really step goes step by step through the entire college therein. Uh, we pre-recorded videos with admissions. And then we also utilize, like you'll see up here in this screen area where um, we've got Berkeley up there, we've utilized a lot of the videos that they have on campus, some of these micro videos I was talking about before. So pushing that content to students and making it more of a discussion kind of graded experience with quizzes and engagement pieces along the way. Um, here, this shows you within, this is just a look at Canvas, but um, we push them out to, we give them the link to where they can go explore college majors. And we had them take a list out of those top majors that you're interested in and starting to kind of apply that back to what they're doing in the classroom now to prepare to go to college. Um, here, so the data collection piece. So we've been working with a lot of our partners on what data to collect and how to collect it. And some of you are probably much better versed in the data collection piece, but this has kind of been more collaborative on our end. So essentially from our side here at Focus, when we're hosting an event, we collect basically every bit of information that students send back to us and we count it as a student engagement. So everything from students who registered for the events to students who participated, the number of chat submissions, um, and then here is a, a sample evaluation form that we send out after each visit and you can access that. You can even copy it if you'd like. It's out there in the wild. And from there, we like to collect data and feedback. And one of the questions that we have on there is how can we make virtual programming better for you? And we've gotten some really good feedback from students about that. Um, this other piece, I put this in bold to ask for match. So if a campus is donating their time and efforts to helping you do a campus visit, um, in most cases, you can count that as match. Um, or if you're working with a vendor like, like Focus, we can offer you match in that case as well too. So it's, um, we do a lot of behind the scenes work to make these visits happen. But that match piece, uh, if you do 10 campus visits, you can essentially have 10 partners offering you match there. Annie, do you want to talk about it from the from the vet, uh, from the grant perspective? What data you look for? Yeah, absolutely. So we have not been having students register. Um, however, we do download rosters after the visit and um, ask students to change their name so that we know what high school they're with. And then our coordinators are uploading that into our portal system, so that is being tracked. Um, we've also been tracking our recorded watches so not only do we see from our gear up website how many folks are viewing different videos which is great feedback just in terms of the uh, campus itself and the content available there but we're asking that our uh, coordinators in the high school are checking in with students and asking them a pretty simple kind of feedback question or reflection question so that we know that they were involved and watched a recording um, we do our campus virtual visits noon at noontime during the weekdays. So that works really well for some schools and other schools are relying solely on the recorded versions. Um, and then of course we have our chats downloaded via Zoom and are able to comb through those afterwards as well. Um, I think that match in the virtual world, I don't know if I'm, I'm the only one who thinks this, but I think it's been easier than ever to get match. Basically, after we have a virtual visit, I reach back out to our admissions counselor, send along a match form, and then let them know that the recording is up on our website if they want to utilize it for anything. So um, the nice thing about technology in the virtual world is that data is pretty easy to get. Um, definitely a lot easier than asking a student to fill out a survey or something after they've been 
working with you in person at a live event. So, yeah. And we've been receiving really candid feedback from students about um, events. And I mean, even as uh, the previous speaker was talking about grace as well, um, I've definitely experienced a campus visit that's gone a little haywire technology wise. And the students themselves just fully understood that. And we just picked right up where we left off. And, um, but the students themselves kind of that feedback piece uh, consistently for students who are not in the classroom, the feedback is we wish this could be in person, but the, you know, this is the best option that we have right now. And that's kind of just the mentality that we've been taking. Um, we've also uh, worked with our partners on feedback too, if visits aren't going well, or there's just something like what Annie mentioned before, something missing about it. Why can't we try? We kind of experienced that with um, a partner in Maine where we just were not getting as much interactivity and seeing campus to the best of our abilities. And so their college coordinators right now are unable to go um, into high schools to see their students. So we placed their college counselors on each of the schools, uh, each of the colleges campuses and had them kind of take various videos around campus or place themselves in the student center. Um, there's a question here, Annie, you might be able to answer this one a little bit better. Do you run into colleges and universities having federal funding and therefore can't use their match? We partner with one local college frequently and can't use their time as match because of funding. We haven't run into that yet. We um, have only done about seven virtual visits thus far. So that could be something we run into eventually, but I, I haven't seen that yet, so. No, we haven't received a lot of pushback about that um, either. So yeah. Um, so here, so this is Annie and I's information on um, all things campus visits. And usually I've been able to push people also at Focus, um, if you would like some match as well, we're, we do a free webinar series of resources we're gonna be doing, who wants to be a millionaire um, this Thursday about financial aid resources, giving you just a few new things to incorporate with your students. Well, we're using a, a, um, a financial aid expert from uh, NACAC there, but it's free and we provide you match as well for that there. Um, and then I will link, um, can you explain how you track when students have watched a video tour? So that's a question that we have. Um, so for us at Focus, we actually create a website for our partners embedded into our website with a sign-in on there. So we know students have watched it. So they sign in, they watch it. Um, within, if you're using a learning management system too, you can see some of that through the backbones of the settings through that system. So if you build a module out, I do have a, a couple of partners who have taken the recorded videos from our live sessions, which we give access to, and then they'll put that into their own built course for students so they can see that. Yeah, and for us, sorry, that might have been a confusing piece that I threw out there. We are, we have high school staff within the high schools who are working regularly with their students and tracking if those students have watched recorded versions. So working with the students to ask follow-up questions and, and such, um, because again, not everyone has that free noon lunchtime hour. Um, we also had a uh, specification in the chat around federal funding. So it sounds like, you know, you wouldn't, it would depend on the program. You might not be able to get matched from a program like TRIO, which definitely makes sense. Um, for us, we've been going through the admissions process or the admissions office or visit office, just like we would if we were scheduling a campus visit in person. Uh, Jennifer says, I create a Google form and link the video. And when students complete the form, it keeps track of who's watched the video. That's a great idea. That's super awesome. I love that. Yeah. And then we also, uh, sometimes on our eval forms, we will have students fill out the eval form and then create a link that goes also to the recorded, uh, the recorded videos as well too. We've been trying to put those recorded videos out there as much as possible for students to have access to based on um, just availability issues. 
Yeah, and I encourage folks, um, maybe Washington specific folks, but really anyone across the country can access our recorded virtual visits. Um, we would love to have you benefit from those and not have to recreate the wheel. But again, they are all Washington institutions. So if you're in Texas, your students might be a little confused if you're doing all the Washington public four years, but um, a good to get a taste of institutions across the country as well. So please um, reach out to me or I know the link is on this as well. So we would love to have you utilize those. Yeah, and here are all of the session resources that we put in one spot. Uh, Renee, thank you for putting the link back up to the presentation there, but it's all open for everyone. And if you have questions about those, Annie and I are definitely willing to offer them. Uh, I feel like as everybody's made the pivot to the virtual space, uh, uh, one thing that I have appreciated is the amount of brainstorming that has happened or how some of these ideas have just come out of um, really a, a drawing board sort of situation. And often I call up Annie or we chat and talk about what's going on and saying like, hey, what's working for you or what challenges are you encountering? And that to me has been really valuable within this community. So we're here to help you. We're here to provide um, we're here to provide as many resources that we have out there available to you. Yes, thank you all for being here. Yeah, and that's our presentation, thank you.